Hey everybody, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. Now, uh, for most of you listening along at home, it's not going to seem like it's been a long time <laughs> since we last talked, but I think it's been six or seven months since I last released anything. Wanted to talk a little bit about uh, why that is today. And a couple of people have asked me if I'm going to do more stuff. And I try to reply, and I, I don't know if it's because of how YouTube keeps changing things, but I'm not able to reply to you because we don't have a certain friendship level or something on YouTube, so I apologize about that, but it's it's not me ignoring you. It's it's just some weird YouTube thing where I can't reply. Oh, uh, by the way, this is a new microphone, so yay. A few things that have gotten in the way of me releasing stuff, as I think I might have mentioned on the last one. I had just moved about six or seven months ago, so that put a big crimp in things. I think I just finished up a cycle right after I moved. But then there was a lot of job issues, blah, 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 but I've been at the place where I've been now for probably five months or more, so it's not really that. <laughs> a few big things made this one take so long. I have a new library now because I live somewhere different and I've been exploring what my library has and being excited by things there. I uh, especially started reading some different books because I reached a really bad point here and had a couple of things that let's go ahead and talk about. The Ruin, I, I believe, is the third part of the uh, Year of Rogue Dragons and um, I'm, I'm looking at my list right now, and it's been so long since I read that one. And, and that one, I just ended up skipping through, like I skimmed it, looking for the bits that I was interested in, and it's been so long, honestly, I, this is how much impression it made. I, I, I don't remember which bits I was looking for. I know I liked the love story subplot, and if I remember correctly, it's book three where there's something really creepy that happens with that, but it might have been book two, but I don't even remember remember what it was that happened, honestly, and it didn't make that big of an impression on me. And it just felt like, you know, book one, overall, I enjoyed. Um, did I mention new microphone? I, I meant to mention that, and I think I forgot it. New microphone, very exciting. The first one, I, I enjoyed well enough. I mean, I thought it showed promise, and it was a decent first part of a trilogy, but the thing that really hooked me was the end where he wrote from Samister, the, the villain of the piece, his point of view, and I just thought, this guy is really interesting. I want to find out more about him. And then the only times that he really shows up in book two or three, he just kind of turns into a mustachio-twirling villain. And I felt really cheated by that and very frustrated because I have come to enjoy Byers a lot more than I thought I would. Um, he's kind of hit or miss for me. But in general, I, I can usually at least kind of make it through his stuff. There was that one priest story that didn't work, but... Man, the priest stuff has just been rocky as all hell. So that one just really... I You know, I felt beholden to finish them, to read them more than I would have read something that I just wasn't enjoying because I did enjoy the first one and I kept hoping somehow it would redeem itself in my eyes, and it just never did. And, and like, as soon as you find out why it's the Year of Rogue Dragons and what the plot is, you know how it's basically going to end, you know? I mean... They solve the rage, and it doesn't really... I, I can't remember if it even has any, like, lasting impact on Dragonkind. I mean, that's how disinterested I was. Please feel free in the comments to mention and let everybody know if it, if it really does. I don't think that it did. I mean, I think we had a couple of personal arcs, and that was about it. You know, and everybody got into near fights, and a few people died from near things. And I So that was just such a frustrating letdown for so many reasons. And it's not that, like, it's the worst book ever. It's just... All those reasons combined made me really tired of the realm, so, and, and, you know, I had a new library to explore. So just in case you're curious, a few things that I found that I really liked. I'm totally blanking on the author's name right now. I think it's Mark something, maybe Mark Lawrence? I could be wrong. Prince of Thorns is the first one of that trilogy, and uh, Emperor of Thorns, the, the last one of the trilogy, or I don't know, maybe it's going to go beyond that, but that would seem strange, because Emperor seems about as high up as you can get, middle, of course, is king. Emperor just came out, I read Prince of Thorns, loved it, absolutely loved it. It's like, god, I don't know, canical, uh, canical for Leibowitz meets like Pulp Fiction or something? I mean, it's so cool. Uh, it, it just, I, I read that in like, like, a, like a burning flash. 
the uh the the Brent Weeks Night Angel trilogy. I read the first book of that and it it had a, a couple of slow bits, but overall I was so excited by it. Like I really felt like it just it it really went places I didn't expect it to go, and I was very excited by that. There was another one that was very similar to that one, and I wish I could remember the name of it, uh, but it was like kid being trained to be an assassin is how it starts out, and I was like, well, you know, I've seen this before, but I like the writing well enough, and like 120 pages in or so, I just realized, like, I, I don't care about anything here, and uh, I'm trying to think, I've been reading a lot of comics, the, the library here in Portland has some amazing uh, comics collections, Oh, yeah, I read uh, uh, Raymond E. Feist's uh, Magician, finally, um, for the first time, and that was weird. Like, I loved Magician Apprentice so much and just burned right through that and bought, like, a bunch of the books in that series because I was so excited by it. And uh, uh, then I really didn't like Magician Master, and it kind of... (laughs) <laughs> ruined me on the series and so I'm like yeah, I'll maybe go back to it one day so yeah it's it's uh you know and I I know that's a huge tangent and I apologize because this is meant to be about the realms but I just thought you know I read a bunch of stuff I really did enjoy I, I thought I would share uh that with you and I I still haven't finished the Malice <laughs> series I've still got book 10 to read on that and I don't know if I ever will because I'm scared for it to end so in any case Came back to reading, started with Yellow Silk by Don Bassingthwaite. Just ended up skipping over that. It's, it's again, it's not that the book is bad. I just, I was like, I need something that's really going to hook me back in to the realms and get me excited about it again. And the Yellow Silk was not that book. And I'll, I'll tell you something that just annoys the crap out of me. The Thieves or the Rogues books that we have is the fact that you never know what the hell the title means until like halfway through or something. I'm like, I don't care if the yellow silk is a MacGuffin. I just want to know what it is, you know? Um, And I'm sure it's explained at some point, but not in the first hundred or so pages. It just, it it was a lot of Eastern stuff, which I thought, you know, could be interesting, but I don't know, the, the, the method that he chose to explore it did not do anything for me. But then Lisa Smedma comes in and saves the day. Lisa Smedma, who's writing in the, the few places that I've read it so far, I really enjoyed I think, no, I, 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 she did a, an Heirs of Prophecy, or she, or a, a Heirs of Prophecy was the title of the book that she did in the Sembian series, and I remember I got that mixed up with the Veronica one, and I can't remember if I even liked it, but, you know, those were rocky books, it, that was a tough series, I think, to be a part of, but overall, I've enjoyed her, and, uh, we're starting on the, um, uh, What's the name of the trilogy? House of Serpents? I don't know. Starting on that, the first one, Benham's Taste, is an odd little book because I really, really enjoyed it. Really liked it, but it's like that there are a lot of dreams in it. And I get that the dreams played an important role in this because essentially the main character very early on has a mind seed put inside him. And so it's like in seven days, he's going to turn into a Yuan-Ti. Uh, or Wanti, I don't know how you pronounce that exactly, but anyway, he's going to turn into a you know a snake person if he doesn't get this mind seed out of him, and his dreams are him experiencing things from the Yuanti chick who has put the seed in there, so it's like helping him understand her and blah blah blah. But I always just skip dreams in books. I I hate dreams in books. Like I just think it's the dumbest thing ever because I'm like, dreams don't mean anything. They're just you know, psychic effluvia. I, I just, I don't, I don't care. And even in this, where they actually meant something, skipping it didn't ruin anything. So, uh, so there was some skipping going on, but mostly because there are so many friggin' dreams in here. So I really like the fact that this had a lot to do with psionics. I'm a psionics fan, as I think I've mentioned before. They did a, they, I always say they, like Lisa, obviously Lisa did uh, a little too much of the kind of stuff like, uh, uh, oh God, what was that one a guy I like, the something stone, the, the sorcerer's stone, <laughs> no, that's Harry Potter, but the uh, uh, they did a little too much like that book did, where it was like, here is how magic works, and blah, 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 and they did a little too much with like, here is how a scion must prepare themselves, and the type of meditation you need to do, and the poses, and you know, I'm like, I, I don't care, like, you know, just, just cast your mind spell and go on but whatever i it's like it doesn't detract from the book it's not like 
the book doesn't feel like a how to play a scion. It just feels like there's maybe a little too much of that, and I would have uh, curbed that. But the character is figuring out how to be a scion, and I thought that was cool. The other thing that I liked is that this is part one of a trilogy, but it is a self-contained story. I mean, I think there are some dangling subplots, but um, overall, you know, it's it's kind of done. I think that was a big problem with Year of Rogue Dragons, is that it felt like it was one book. You probably hear that, this, the traffic here is so ridiculously loud, and I don't know why, I'm not, like, right against the road. Anyway, it, it just it felt like one book that had about two books worth of filler in it, and... Um, or two books worth of overwriting, I guess. And this one was like a good, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm reading it in the Omnibus edition, so it was like 250 pages. I'm sure it was like 360 or something in a normal book size or 400. And it felt like it could have been, you know, maybe 20 or so pages less, but overall pretty solid. And and I don't know, th- there's something about Smedman's writing. It seems like in short stories, she goes for a more lyrical style. Uh, the, the one story I've read. I'm going to just make that sweeping assumption. Whereas in a novel, she goes for a very different style. It's tough to pin down, like, you know, I get frustrated at people overwriting in the Realm series uh, over and over again, as I'm sure you're tired of me saying. But Lisa does this form of overwriting in a way that I like. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Richard Lehman, which is a weird connection to make there. But Lehman used to do a lot of stuff where people would kind of think of worst case scenarios, if you will, or, you know, they would try to solve a mystery and you would actually see people working through it rather than just, oh, he had an idea, you know, it would be like, what if it's this? What if it's that? What do they have to gain? And, you know, and and people would think a lot closer to how people actually think. And there was a lot of that going on in here. I'll be honest, most of the, you know, it's like, the plot basically has two MacGuffins. There's this plague going on, and the main character, it's either Arvin or Avarin. I think it's Arvin. Um, he's he's trying to save his best friend. But what's weird is, never really gave a crap about his best friend. I didn't feel like that was set up strongly enough, and I kind of wish she had. But since it's so weirdly hit or miss about finding that, like most of the book is about the plague side of things, I didn't think that mattered still, you know, it's like I would have said, okay, let's shift the focus of this book a little more, but whatever, not my book. And I still enjoyed it, so whatevs, right? But in any case, we get to see the city of Flondeth, and I I would say, you know, a lot of those books that kind of focus on a city explore the city to the point where I'm kind of like, okay, I'm sick of this by now, or I feel like I understand it completely, and, you know, I'm good. It can just serve as a backdrop at this point. This is actually one of the few books where we really focus on a city and I feel like I want to figure out more about this. And possibly it's just because I don't know much about the Wanti uh, and and so I'm much more curious about them than the setting. I don't know. Uh, but in any case, uh, we'll, we'll next be going right into Viper's Kiss. Uh, and I'm not sure what else we'll cover next time. Probably Elminster's Daughter, but my luck with Greenwood, that'll probably be a skip. And I usually like to do at least two that I've actually read. So we'll see. In any case, yeah, I I dug Venom's Taste. I'm curious to see what other people think about it, because I honestly haven't seen many people talk about this, like, ever. Um, I guess I should go check the Amazon page, see what the reviews are like. You know, there are certain Realms books that everybody talks about, right? I mean, uh, Salvatore and uh, War of the Spider Queen. You know, it's kind of well known that those are both loved, loved, loved. So it's it's interesting uh, that there are so many of these that I just don't see getting much attention. Uh, so hopefully this helps that out in some small way. In any case, uh, it's good to be back. And, you know, I'm I, one way or the other, you'll hear me again pretty soon babbling on. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the new mic. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. One other thing that's been taking up a lot of time is that I'm actually doing professional audiobooks now, which, you know, there I get to actually read a script, and so I'm not umming and awing and um, I, I edit them much more. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, uh, at the time of this recording, I have one book that's been narrated that's available on um, Audible and Amazon and iTunes. And, you know, if if you're curious about it, feel free to leave a comment. I don't think anybody's really going to be like, oh, I just love his voice so much. I'm going to go listen to him narrate a book, but I'll 
<laughs> I'll let you know in the comments if anybody cares. If not, no biggie. Not what we're here for. Uh, just another tangent to go on. But yeah, so a lot of my time reading has been spent reading the books that I need to narrate. Because, of course, you've got to read them before narrating them so you know what's going on and etc 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 problem there is as i've mentioned many times before i'm kind of a slow reader so that takes up a lot of my reading time these days but i am at a kind of slow point right now um i'm, I'm doing two books but that they have due dates far in the future and i feel pretty confident about hitting those so i have taken a break and i'm reading realm stuff and i want to get a little farther on this yeah, so anyway, I really, really appreciate you guys for uh, sticking with me. Yeah, this is uh, Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered. <laughs>